Hello and welcome to WaveScan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio. Researched and written by Adrian Peterson in Indianapolis, Indiana, and produced in the studios of WRMI Shortwave in Miami, Florida. I'm Jeff White. Today on WaveScan, a Wednesday wireless event on Thursday, and our Australian DX report. The title of our opening feature here in Basecamp today is A Wednesday Wireless Event on Thursday. This sounds like an enigma, and truly it is, until you understand what's involved. Keep on listening and it will become clear to you. To the north of York Peninsula, at the top of the Australian mainland in Queensland, there lies a group of more than 100 islands, which are identified on the map as the Torres Strait Islands. This cluster of islands provides some sort of a bridge across the nearly 100 miles of ocean that separate Australia and New Guinea. They were discovered in 1605 and named in honor of the Spanish explorer Luis Baez de Torres. The first European settlement was established on Albany Island in 1863, though during the next year this small colony was transferred to the Australian mainland at Somerset. Three years later again, the colony was transferred out to the islands once more, this time to Thursday Island. you remember that Captain William Bly on the good ship Bounty underwent a mutiny in the South Pacific in 1789. The ship was taken to Pitcairn Island and burned there. But the captain and some of his crew were put into a 23-foot-long rowing boat, and they safely made the 4,000-mile journey across open Pacific waters to Jakarta in Indonesia. On the way, Bly gave names to many of the islands, including Sunday Island, and Monday Island, and Tuesday Island, right through to the end of the week. He it was who gave the name to Thursday Island, the center of our feature story today here in Wavescan. In the local language, Thursday Island is known as Waiben, which means appropriately no water, due to the fact that fresh water is in short supply on the island. Actually, Thursday Island is quite a small island with a total area of just one and a half square miles, though it is acknowledged as the capital of the Torres Strait Islands, with a population of two and a half thousand. The original islanders were Melanesians and Polynesians and Aborigines from New Guinea and the Pacific and Australia. More than a hundred years ago, a large number of Japanese pearl divers came to Thursday Island during the era when pearl shells were used commercially for the making of buttons for the clothing industry. During the Pacific War in the middle of last century, the Japanese Air Force did not bomb Thursday Island due to the colony of Japanese migrants who had settled there, though actually by this time they had all been removed to the Australian mainland for safety. During the year 1893, a large fort was constructed on Green Hill, Thursday Island, to guard against a feared invasion from Russia. During World War II, this fort was in use as an army communication station. Back in the year 1908, an Australian newspaper reported that a wireless station would be installed on Thursday Island as part of a planned network of wireless stations surrounding the Australian continent. Progress was slow, but four years later, on November 16, 1912, the first test transmissions took place and successful Morse communication was made with two sister stations, VIB in Brisbane, and VIM in Melbourne. This new wireless facility was located on a section of the low green hill. The transmitter was rated at 5 kilowatts, and the receiver was a simple crystal set receiver. The station was installed on a property that was sold to the Commonwealth government by the government of the state of Queensland. The property was adjacent to the local jail. This new wireless station on Thursday Island was on the air under the call sign VII, and it was taken into service for communication with the Australian mainland, and also to act as an intermediate relay station between other wireless stations in Australia and New Guinea. The auspicious opening date for this new wireless station, VII, on Thursday Island was Wednesday, February 26, 1913 and on that date the station was taken into regular service. Hence the rather appropriate title for our topic, A Wednesday Wireless Event on Thursday. 
We might also add that the aforementioned sister station, VIG, in Port Moresby, New Guinea, was officially taken into service on that same day, February 26, 1913, exactly 100 years ago, next Tuesday. In 1915, along with all of the other coastal wireless stations surrounding the Australian continent, Station VII was taken over by the Australian Navy for wartime control. Then, in October 1920, the PMG Department took over all of these stations, and two years later again, they all reverted back to the control of AWA, the original founder of all of these stations. In the mid-1920s, Station VII was upgraded and modernized, and the old spark equipment was replaced with electronic valve equipment. At the beginning of World War II in September 1939, the network of AWA coastal wireless stations was taken over again by the Australian Navy, and two years later, Station VII on Thursday Island began participation in the Coast Watching Service. During this wartime era, VII maintained communication with the operators of small transmitters that were used to pass information from within Japanese-occupied territories back to the authorities in Australia. In 1947, station VII, along with all of the other coastal wireless stations, was taken over by OTC, the Overseas Telecommunication, and in 1992, OTC became Telstra. Available information would indicate that station VII was finally closed in the early 1990s, at the end of some 80 years of important communication service. However, As time has gone by, other radio stations have been established on lonely Thursday Island. Somewhere around the 1970s, a low-powered 20-watt station, VL4GA, was established for local communication on shortwave. And around the 1980s, an aircraft communication transmitter, VZTD, was installed, along with a long-wave aircraft beacon, HID, on 356 kilohertz. The first radio broadcasting station on Thursday Island was the ABC Medium Wave Station with the appropriate call sign 4TI, and this was inaugurated as a slave relay station in October 1979. A community medium wave station 4MW was launched at the beginning of the new century, and since then, two FM stations have taken to the air, as well as five repeater TV stations. And that's the story of a Wednesday wireless event on Thursday. The story of the isolated wireless station VII on Thursday Island, which was officially inaugurated on a Wednesday. If it were still on the air today, historic wireless station VII would celebrate its 100th anniversary next Tuesday. You're listening to WaveScan from Adventist World Radio. Send your comments and reception reports to WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229 in the United States. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229 in the USA. Or you can email us at WaveScan at awr.org. Our email once again, wavescan at awr.org. Next on Wavescan, it's Bob Padula and his Australian DX report. Greetings to shortwave enthusiasts around the world. This is Bob Padula in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, with another edition of the Australian DX report. These magazines provide news of shortwave broadcasting stations, monitoring summaries, propagation news, and other information concerning world international broadcasting. As I start to remind you that full detail QSLs are available for correct reports received for these episodes. The address will be given at the end of the program. And to note that All times, days and dates given in our episodes are in UTC and we use the 24-hour time system. The episodes are compiled from resources made available by the Electronic DX Express radio 
Monitoring Association, which is based here in Melbourne. Start our program this time. Here's our information from the Ionospheric Prediction Service in Sydney, New South Wales, here in Australia, concerning solar activity. The IPS reports that solar activity is now classified as very low. The 10.7 centimetre solar radio flux has dropped to 100, and the only equivalent smooth sunspot number has fallen to 48. And those figures are not likely to increase significantly in the immediate future. All this means, of course, that high frequency propagation over long distances on darkness or semi-darkness paths on frequencies above about 13 megahertz will continue to be unreliable. However, daylight paths for frequencies above about 15 megahertz will be satisfactorily. In the meantime, some shortwave station news which has come to hand. First of all, Turkey. Some amendments have been made to the Voice of Turkey transmission schedule for the current season. Some of the English programs in the Voice of Turkey now broadcast on these times and frequencies. From 0400 to 0455, on 7240 to the Middle East and in parallel on 9655 to North America. Other English language programs from the Voice of Turkey include 1330 to 1425 on 12035 to Western Europe and 1730 to 1825 on 11730, that program is broadcast to Southern Asia. And from 1930 to 2025 on 6050 to Western Europe. And 2130 to 2225 on 9610 to Southeast Asia in parallel with 596, sorry, I'm sorry, 2300 to 2355, that's on 5960 English to North America. Now, some further information concerning schedule changes. Transworld Radio India in Hindi and Indian languages. New schedule is 1315 to 1430 on the new frequency of 15755 from Tashkent in Uzbekistan to South Asia and 1430-1615 on 7505 also from Tashkent to South Asia in Hindi and Punjabi. Now, the Voice of the Islamic Republic of Iran some of the programs from the schedule, it's a very long schedule, of course we can't provide that complete schedule here, but some of the English language programs from Iran are as follows. 1930 to 2027 on 7345 to Western Europe, parallel with 13670 to Southern Africa and 15450 to Southern Africa. There's also English programs from the Voice of the Islamic Republic of Iran, 1930 to 2027 on 6040 to Western Europe. And programs in other time, other time periods from Iran, English, 0330 to 0427 on 9710 to North America, that is actually the program entitled The Voice of Justice and it's parallel to 11770. Now, an interesting new frequency which is scheduled for the Voice of the Islamic Republic of Iran is 4005, that's just above the 75 metre band. It's scheduled 1930 to 2027 with programs in Russian to Eastern Europe. So that's an unusual new frequency 
for Iran. Now, the additional frequency for the voice of Russia in the Kurdish program, 1500 to 5th to 1600, that's actually from Armavir, and 1900 to 2000 on 11985 from Yerevan in Armenia, that broadcasts is in Arabic to East Africa. Now, here in Melbourne recently, the 25 metre band has been providing quite good signals during our post sunrise period, 1900 to 1930, with propagation, good propagation from all continents. Here's a selection of some of the items I noted recently. 11580, All India Radio, and 11560, Radio Cairo in Egypt. 11600, Libyan Broadcasting Service. And 11615, the voice of the Somali Republic, known as Radio Damal, from Wolverton in the United Kingdom. Another frequency for All India Radio, 11670 in English and in Arabic for All India Radio on 11710. 11735, quite good reception from Radio Zanzibar in local languages. And 11775, a large signal from Radio Algeria, broadcasting from the Isidon France relay station in Arabic. And some frequencies for Deutsche Welle from Kigali in Rwanda, 11800 in English, and 11865 in Portuguese, and that latter transmission signs on at 1930. And the BBC from Ascension in English on 11810, this is 1900 to 1930. And 11890, the Philippines Broadcasting Service in English and Tagalog. Very good signals here in Melbourne. And Radio France International from Isidon in France. Prince programs on 11995. And 12080, the voice of America from Botswana in French. And 12095, the BBC from Cyprus in English. And another frequency for All India Radio in English, 11935. And on 11985, the voice of Russia from Yerevan in Armenia, broadcasting in Arabic. So, quite good reception in the 25 metre band here in Melbourne during our post sunrise period, 1900 to 1930, with good propagation from all continents. Now some shortwave station news once again. This time, Radio Free Sarawak, the station is becoming quite popular. With good signals throughout Southeast Asia. It's been making some frequency changes. It actually uses frequent or transmitting capacity high from other broadcasters. And the latest schedule is 1100 to 1258 on 11600. And this apparently replaces 9900. And the transmitter site for that service is believed to be Trincomalee in Sri Lanka. It also broadcasts between 1000 and 1100 on 15425, and that transmitter site is believed to be Palau, or Karoa in Republic of Palau. So there will most likely be more frequency changes as the station makes adjustments to improve its reception across South East Asia. Asia. Now, further international broadcasting station news. First of all, the new broadcast of Mobile Voice Broadcasting Network in Farsi. It's been heard by Radio Bulgaria monitoring. Very strong signals between 1430 and 1630 on 7465. And the frequency changes of the Shio Sea Breeze political station in various languages broadcasting to Korea uses brokered transmitters 1330 to 1430 the new frequency is 5910 from Yamata in Japan it replaces 5985 
and 2000 to 2100, the same frequency 5910 from Yamata, replacing 5955. Now, programs are in Japanese, Chinese, Korean and English at various days and at various times. And the Voice of Korea has been noted with the variable schedule. Some transmitters have not been on the air each day and others have been coming and going. It may well be that there are transmitter modifications or new transmitters being installed or tested in North Korea. So some of the frequencies that have been heard include 6170, 1400 to 2050 in various languages to Western Europe and 9325, same time period, also various languages to Western Europe. Now frequency change for Radio New Zealand is 15720, 1059 to 1259, 15720, and that's broadcast to Northwest and Pacific and Timor. So that was a few notes. That were those were a few notes of frequency and schedule changes for international broadcasters. And that's all we have time for in our episode of the Australian DX Report, which came to you from Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. I'd just like to remind you that we offer full detail QSL cards showing Australian scenes and wildlife for correct reports received for these broadcasts. We also offer an email QSL service for reports sent by the internet or email. Full details about the QSL service are available at the Electronic D Express homepage, which is simply edxp.org. So until our next program, this is Rob Padula in Melbourne and Victoria, Australia. Wishing you all good listening. Thanks for being with us and good DX. See you soon. Thanks, Bob. And now we want to tell you about the 2013 European DX Council Conference in Portugal. And if you are a shortwave listener or anyone with an interest in shortwave radio, you are welcome to attend. This is going to be held in the city of Figueira da Foz in Portugal on September 6th through September 9th of 2013 at the Sweet Residence and Gardens Hotel, located about 500 metres from the nearest beach of the Atlantic Ocean, there in Figueira da Foz, that's uh, north of Lisbon in Portugal. Here's an idea of what's going to be happening there. On Friday, the 6th of September, check-in in the evening and a, uh, a welcome session. Then on Saturday, September 7th, after breakfast, a program about DXing and the European DX Council with uh, subjects such as the, an introduction to the history and recent developments of Portuguese shortwave and medium wave broadcasting by Mika Palo and a talk with Portuguese DXers on the little known DX hobby in Portugal, as well as current topics related to the European DX Council. In the afternoon of Saturday, September 7th, at 1500 hours, a visit to the Sotomayor Palace and Hajo Fos do Mondego, a local private FM station in Figueira de Fos. Then in the late afternoon, a DX program uh, with uh, Italian DXer Dario Monferini and a slideshow about his recent trip to radio stations in Peru. And finally on Saturday night, the EDXC banquet. Then on Sunday, September 8th, after breakfast, a day tour by bus, and it's going to include a visit to the historic center of Coimbra, the city of Coimbra, um, which is um, to the east of uh, Figueira de Foz, a visit to the transmitter center of RDP, or Radio Fusal Portugal, uh, Centro, and a visit to the Quinta do Encontro Vineyard, uh, and a wine museum in Anadia. Then the return to the hotel and a DX program in the evening. Then on Monday, September 9th, a quick breakfast and check out from the hotel and a departure by
by bus to Lisbon, the capital of Portugal. And at 1100 hours, there will be a tour in Lisbon, visits to RDP Internacional, uh, Radio Fusal Portugal uh, International Service, and which is still on the air, by the way, on the Internet, although not on shortwave anymore, unfortunately. And also a visit to Radio Renascença, which, as longtime shortwave listeners will recall, uh, used to be on shortwave as well from Portugal. Lunch on your own on Monday and sightseeing in Lisbon. And the end of the official program at 1700 hours on Monday, September 9th. The, uh, an approximate price for uh, attending the meeting is 320 euros if, uh, per person if you're in a single room or 270 euros per person in a double room. And this includes three nights of accommodation at the conference hotel in Figueira da Foz, breakfast at the hotel, a welcome reception on Friday, visit to Radio Foz do Monego on Saturday, banquet dinner with the program on Saturday, a day tour on Sunday with the lunch in the vineyard, and uh, transfer and sightseeing in Lisbon on Monday, and the conference fee, all that for, uh, for the price we just mentioned. So, if you'd like more information, you can email the conference coordinator in Portugal, Mika Paulo. His address is M-I-K-A dot P-A-L-O at C-L-I-X dot P-T. Or you can email Kari Kivekas, the new Secretary General of the EDXC, and his address is ksk at sdxl dot org. And you can also find more information on the European DX Council blog, which is www.edxcnews.wordpress.com. We end today with some music from Syria. This is from the Syrian singer Asala Nasri. Thanks for listening to Wayscan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio, researched and written in Indianapolis by Dr. Adrian Peterson. Next week, 100 Years of Wireless and Radio in Bulgaria, Part 4, The Wartime Years. The big 2013 AWR annual DX contest, Focus on Africa, and our Japan DX report. If you'd like a Wavescan QSL card, the address to send your reception reports to is Wavescan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. That's Wavescan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. Our email is wavescan at awr.org. That's wavescan at awr.org. I'm Jeff White at WRMI in Miami. Till next week, good listening, everyone. <laughs>